guys today we're going to be fixing gears with chips so right here we have a chip right here we have a chip the reason for fixing this is because these chips have tendency to keep on chipping so we're not going to be refacing this with hardened steel or heating this to retemper it what we're going to do is be adding a binder here with mild steel what we're going to need first we're going to need a torch not to heat this to a glowing temperature only to burn off the impregnated oil inside of the metal. So then second, we're going to need a welder. So what we're using is a MIG welder with mild steel. So then we're going to weld this up. We're going to want to weld this with a cold weld, not a hot weld. We want to weld the bubble up like a crappy weld that you didn't want to weld and instead of having it sink in, which means we just welded with a real hot weld. We're going to be untempering the surfaces that are still here. And we don't want to untemper the, the core of this tooth here. So a neighboring gear's bearing went out and the, the gear ended up pitching. And the bottom of the gear that would have been right here started riding up here. And it would have been on the edge and started chipping off. As you might be able to see here, it's thinner at the top here than it is at the bottom. So even when we put this back together, it's only going to be writing fairly true until about right up here until later on in its lifespan. And it's going to start wearing this gear down further and writing more on the equal surface as long as this gear lasts that long. So next, what we're going to do after we do our weld, we're going to use a 60 or 80 grit sandpaper disc on a grinder. Works better than a grinding stone or a grinding wheel cutting disc. Don't use that. The reason why I'm not using a stick welder, which I can get better alloys to deal with this better. Maybe not all the way around, but it's easier. You can just go down and buy whatever type of uh, stick welding material you want. Well, um, in this case, you'd probably want to be using a 7018 AC. And that is... Oh, upside down rod right there. I don't know if you can see that. 7018 AC, or you can use DC if you're using a DC welder. Um, but that splatters too much and makes it so I have to clean too much up. I just want to keep this from chipping more. So the chips up here on the top, little fractures and stuff, I'm just going to smooth those off with this grinding wheel, or the sandpaper wheel. So I'm going to weld it, weld it high, weld it cold. Then I'm going to come down and tear most of the material off. I'm going to leave a little bit of it there. And then I'm going to finish it off with the file. And after I'm done filing and I get it right to the right height filing, then I'm going to take sandpaper wheel and do a very, very light pass back at this. So here we got our first step. We're going to heat it. Second step, weld it cold. Third step, grind it down. Fourth step, file it. Fifth step, resurface the whole surface with this. And then we should be done. So we'll run you through step by step of how we're going about this. Hey guys, we got this all welded up. We got our high welds, cold welds, as cold as I can get them. And then we got our fractures taken care of. What we're going to do here next is we're going to grind this down almost to the, the height of this surface here. The outside not so necessary, just can't be high. Um, so then what we're going to do is grind this down almost to the surface and finish it off with the file. Remember you got to heat this up and not overheat it. So, and if you tap it, you can still hear that it's still a hard face surface. We didn't damage the hard face at all. So that's what we want. Next step. So when we start grinding here, what we're going to want to do is grind our outside face first. So we're going to grind this surface down first. So we're not grinding as much material off the side face here as possible. And it'll make it easier to be able to do this. You can see what I'm probably going to end up doing like on this one since there's a little bit of uh, 
proxy that was inside of the weld right here. I'm going to have to grind this in a little bit and re-weld that. But as long as it's not too deep, I'm not too concerned. Um, that's one problem with welding real cold welds. You'll sit on the surface instead of melting all the way through. But it's better than untempering the rest of the metal. So if you have to do it a couple of times to get it right, or prep the surface nicely, or do a real quick weld, one way of welding is letting the ball roll up on the wire and then dropping it down. The ball rolls up on the wire and drops down. The only way to do that is actually running high heat and uh, a lot of wire feed, or, uh, high wire speed. And it makes the ball roll up and then it arcs down and drops and sinks right into the metal. Instead of sitting here and just wall, or heating up the whole surface. That takes practice, and that may be what is necessary to get this. So you don't get this, and you don't get this part of the surface heated up too much. So to close off this video here, we have our surfaces. They're done. We got a little bit of lines, little pit hole stuff from welding cold. That's expected to happen when welding cold. If you were to weld hotter, you wouldn't get that so much, and this is how it looks in the end. So, good luck guys, and uh, hopefully this helps you guys if you're dealing with something that you can't find parts, or parts are way too expensive. But remember, always getting the right thing, fixing it right is the number one option. Fix it right, you don't have to do it again. If you can't find it, and you have to do it yourself on the cheap, you can do this, or you have to send it in, and there's professional companies out there on the internet, one of them's in Canada, that will actually do this process for you. Have a nice day, guys. Enjoy.